They're getting ready for Christmas here, but no rest for the wicked. We're going to review 10 hands I played at the Empire. Let's get it done. A good lag opens to 10. We have Jack 10 suited in the hijack. Mandatory 3 bet in this position. The good lag calls a good flop here, open-ended straight draw, middle pair. It checks to us, but I decide to check back here with just middle pair. Now we make our straight on the turn. He checks again, definitely time to go for a bet. And he calls, the river brings in the back door flush draw. He checks again, but I still think this is a mandatory value spot. We can get called by a lot of hands here. So I go for 125 into 153. He calls very quickly. We show and we are good. That was a promising start. Let's see if we can keep it up. We have a few limps here and we decide to raise to 15 with ace jack offsuit. We get called by two players, have top pair, good kicker. We go for a third pot bet, both players call. Now we make trips on the turn, definitely still in value mode here. Going again for about a third and the cutoff calls again. The queen on the river doesn't change much shouldn't have ace queen um, so now I still think this is a mandatory value bet here if he has an ace it's most likely a weaker one and he could still look us up with a hand like 9 10 9 8 9 jack something like that but do realize that you might get raised here by a hand like a6, a9, or a set of sixes or something like that. But we go for 75 into 163. He tanks for a while, makes the call, and we are good. I changed table and this is now a very interesting hand here. So you see there is a limp, an aggressive studied reg makes it 15, the tilted reg in the cutoff calls the 15, and we have 9-7 suited on the button normally for this sort of a price. This hits the muck straight away, but notice that in the big blind we have Jimmy Any2, and I really mean it. He plays any two cards and he plays them aggressively at times. Definitely a spot I want to be in here. Here. So I do make this loose call and Jimmy any to min clicks it to 30 here He has done this before with hands like 10 deuce offsuit. I'm not joking So now everyone obviously calls here. We do too big pot already and we hit trips here Jimmy any two checks everyone checks to us we make it quite small in hindsight I think I should have made it a bit bigger here but I'm still happy with the, the bet at least because I did bet Jimmy any two calls and the initial razor calls as well we now also uh, have a flush draw on the turn it checks to us I now decide to bet uh, about half pot here because now we also have the insurance of the flush draw in case we are beat although it's quite unlikely that we are and now Jimmy any two raises to 340 basically setting us all in um, the other player gets out of the way we naturally call this all in and we are very lucky on the river we um, river quads and Jimmy any two shows up with ace track I don't have it here but um, yeah he had ace track he thought he had the nuts with his hand and we scoop a very nice pod with quads Jimmy Any2 has left, so I have now changed table again. We have pocket sixes and Beluga calls from the hijack. The small blind makes it 12, definitely a spot I want to be involved in. I call the 12, Beluga calls as well. And we flop a set. The regular player in the small blind seabets. I decide to raise here on this wet board and he might have an ace uh, to call with, but now Beluga calls and the small blind gets out of the way. Um, I don't really love the turn, but uh, still definitely in value mode. I overbet here because I'm thinking if this guy has ace-10 or something like that, uh, 
uh, even another uh, weaker ace, Beluga will call, but unfortunately he finds the fold button here. Now we open ace king offsuit in the cutoff and the big blind an old man calls ace nine six with two clubs he now leads out he probably has an ace i was thinking of raising him here but i thought i have so much equity especially with a, the ace of clubs so i just call another club here now he checks now definitely time to go for value here we make it a third pot he calls and now on this nice river here yes he could have the seven of clubs and thus a straight flush but i'm not afraid of that when he checks to me i have now backdoored into the second nut so going for 60 he sighs but in the end he flicks in the call i don't know what he had but we are definitely good here and now off to a somewhat frustrating hand, ace king again, this time under the gun, we get called by three players, ace eight six with a flush draw, I check range here, so then under the gun plus one, bet everyone calls, I could have raised here but I decided especially having the ace of hearts I wanted to call here, a blank on the turn, it checks through and on the river unfortunately the flush comes in but we still have the ace of hearts i decide to go for a thin value here because i still think that i can get called by plenty weaker aces and unfortunately beluga now min clicks it and i don't really know what this means but I just feel I can't be good here. He would not do this with a hand like a seven or something like that. So I think he must have a flush here or at least something like two pair if he's not scared of the flush. So I decided to make an exploitative fold here. Don't know if it was the correct one, but I feel like there is nothing I could beat even though I'm getting a tremendous price. This was a very interesting one. There are like a million limpers. We check our option with ace five offsuit. King four four, two diamonds. It checks through. Now we turn an ace here. Still definitely checking. Now under the gun bets 15, which is an over bet, but into a tiny pot. I mean, I have top pair now. I thought of folding, but I still decided I have to give this this one a try here I call and now we have the ten of hearts on the river and I decided that I just didn't want to get bluffed here and uh, I mean whilst I don't beat much I decided to go for this very weird play here quarter pot here um, and under the gun he tanks for a while and then he calls and I show my hand and I'm good surprisingly and I say surprisingly because uh, if I really think that it is a surprise, then it was a bad bet, and I do think that it was actually bad in hindsight. But somehow I did get called by something worse, and I, I really don't know by what. I mean, why did he bet with something when uh, the ace came there? So he can't have bet with a king, or especially an over bet. Um, so he might just have had uh, diamonds, and maybe had the ten of diamonds that he rivered a pair then and wanted to look me up for my tiny bet um, but yeah whatever he had he misplayed the turn and I basically misplayed the river but I'm happy that I scooped the pot in the end now we have pocket jacks in the small blind and we have a straddle under the gun there is a race to 15 from the cutoff we decide to go to 60 here and now the big blind the guy who hasn't been out of line much makes it 135 the other players get out of the way and i decide to call this he just min clicked it he could have ace king he could be just messing around although i'm not loving this on the queen nine five flop i would already be quite hard pressed to find a call if you see bet but he 
didn't so that made me a bit suspicious here now the king comes uh, another terrible card for my hand and also for my range um, so if he had ace king now we're behind as well so i decide to check but he checks again and now on a blank river i'm still kind of in give up mode here i check again he checks behind i show my jacks and i am good to my surprise he later says that he had pocket nines which i don't really believe that he would have had a set here so i don't know what was going on here but somehow i won this pot here a decent player opens for a seven in the low jack we have pocket nines and decide to raise it up in the hijack he calls five five three definitely a board i want to see bet with my hand and i want to see bet it big on this one so i make it 35 he calls now the ace comes it's not great for my hand but he should not call um ace highs on the flop unless it's specifically ace x of spades so i decide to just go for value again here hopefully against an under pair or another flush draw um and he calls on the river the ace pairs he checks again and now there is definitely no merit to go for another bet i check behind and he says you're good he just mucks his hand so i think he probably had a flush draw here and we are good and we scoop another nice pot and because everything has gone so well until now i'm finishing this off with one that didn't we make it 10 over a limper an aggro reg makes it 36 uh, in the small blind and we have a mandatory call we flop top two so not going anywhere he makes it quite small third pot not even quite i decide to just call here because he still has the range and nut advantage on this jack river i don't really love it because he could have king 10 when he makes it 85 but i still have to call here nothing else to do and on the river he now goes all in and unfortunately um yeah i can't really get away from this one i thought he could have ace four suited ace jack possibly even ace five suited or the same hand as me so there is nothing i can do uh, well, in the three bet pot with a small spr even though a triple barrel looks very strong from this player but he is a bit on the aggressive side i didn't think he would do it with ace king but as i said he could have weaker two pairs but i would not be shocked to see pocket aces pocket queens pocket jacks and we do indeed see pocket aces and we lose this all in here quite unfortunate but i still think with this hand i just can't get away from it.